Working on El Dingo here. Got all the batteries secured. That foam in between them or foam padding to keep them from vibrating together. Got our controller mounted down. Got our solenoid mounted down. Now it's time to get everything hooked up. Here's our pile of battery cables and things we'll need to get our controller wired up on El Dingo here. And we've got our drawing to go by to make sure we wire it all up right. We've got everything mounted up here. Let's get our controller wired to our batteries and our solenoid and we'll get all that wired to our motor and then of course we'll have the key switch up here on the steering wheel wired up as well it's coming together nicely well I had to make another trip to the hardware store we had to get some wire and some lugs Working on getting our motor and controller and everything wired up. Got most of the cables on it. We got our solenoid on it. Working on the kill switch up to the steering. Doubled up the cables. So we've got two cables for 36. Going to this battery, two cables for 24 volts going to the second battery, the two red cables going to the first battery would provide 12 volts. I was working on wiring up our controller and everything on our old Ingo car yesterday. We ran into a couple of problems. Wired all of our cables up as per our drawing here. And then also wired our solenoid up. After I got it all wired up, before I hooked up the power or ground to the motor, I wanted to test out our circuits. And when I tried the solenoid, it didn't have the loud click it's supposed to have. It had a little light click you could barely hear. And also I noticed that as you moved our slider here, it turns on this switch down in here. And then when the, when the off position turned the switch off, and that took to our solenoid. But I noticed that when I shift, shifted it up here to turn the switch on, I was having arcing up here. That never happened before. So I was having arcing, and the solenoid wasn't working right. So I thought, hmm, it all worked fine in our tests. What I come to find out, as far as the arcing, I ran two cables to each battery for 12, two cables for 24, and two cables for the 36 volt. That way it would, from what I've heard, keep the cables from getting hot and they're kind of not the uh, zero gauge cable, they're real big cables. So I, thought it would be better. But come to find out that when I put, the way I did it was just like our drawing, we had the two first two had nothing going to them and then the way I had that in the drawing was we had one cable going to 12, skip this one, we had a cable going to 24, skip this one, then we had the last two for 36. Well I thought I would be sly and just put 
two cables to the first two. I skip the first two, that's full stop. The two cables to these two would be 12 volt. Two cables to these two would be 24 volt. And two cables to these two would be 36 volt. But, as our slider with the brush went across these, when it went across the two between 20 or 12 and 24, it would arc. And also up here between the 24 and 36, we will touch in both brushes at the same time. It was, I guess, causing a short. I'm not exactly sure, but it wasn't good and it wasn't what was happening in our tests. That never happened before. So, in testing and checking things out, come to find out we need that gap in between so the brush cannot contact to uh, different circuits, I guess you would say, the 12 and 24 or 24 and 36 at the same time. So, what we did was we left our first two blank, that's our full stop. We had enough to work with, so I put uh, the first two cables for 12 volt to the first two, skipped one, put, I don't know if you can see them, but got two cables stacked up that's our 24 volt and I got the two cables stacked up for 36 volt skipping a terminal on each one that way we won't have any crossover or any bridging you would call it so that solved that problem I didn't have any more arcing but the solenoid wasn't kicking in right and that was perplexing so back to our drawing here, doing a little studying and figuring and stuff and I've got it completely backwards. I've got the theory right as far as I can understand, but the drawing is backwards. Because what we've got, the first battery going to our 12 volt isn't a complete circuit because it loops to the next and then it loops to the next. So this is actually backwards. The way this is hooked up, this would be our 12 volts. Because you've got the ground going to the motor, then you've got the positive going to your terminal that goes through everything, back up to the motor also completing the circuit. So this would be 12 volt. This would be 24 volts, and this would be 36 volts. And if that's the case, the wiring to the solenoid was exactly backwards. So these drawings are completely backwards and wrong. So anybody keeping track or following along, disregard drawing dated 7-21-2016. And also, a more elaborate drawing containing the internal switch in the solenoid dated uh, July 23rd, 2016. Because they are totally void and wrong. Here's our more corrected drawing. It is dated 8-2-2016, August 2nd, 2016. And as you can see, our first battery here, we've got the positive going to the 12 volt terminal, and the negative going to the motor. So that completes a circuit. So if we had neither one of these hooked up, we would still have a 12 volt circuit. Whereas on the other one, we didn't. See on our old wrong drawing, battery here is going to the 12 volt terminals it is looped to the rest of the batteries so without them this isn't a circuit back to our good drawing here our updated drawing or corrected drawing the first battery goes to 12 the second battery goes to 24 the third battery goes to 36. 
and your uh, ground goes to the motor. We have power from the 36 volt side going to the solenoid. Whereas the way I had it wired before, I had the power coming off of this battery. So we're only providing the solenoid with 12 volts. So that's why it wasn't kicking on. Right. And also, the way we had it wired before, we had 36 volts wired to 12 volts. 24 to 24, and then the 12 volts wired to the 36. So actually it was like what you would call bath backwards. And you would have hit the accelerator, you would have immediately went to 36 volts, and as you hit it further, you would have went to 24 volts and then 12 volts. You would have actually slowed down. So it was completely backwards. The theory was right, I just drew it backwards. But now we're getting it all fixed up and corrected and we should be back in business now. So here's our corrected drawing with everything that works properly now. But it was kind of confusing to uh, use this on the cart because the batteries were sideways and the solenoids in a different spot. So I drew out this this pretty much has the three batteries sitting in the configuration that they are in the car. The positive is on the low side of all three. The negative is on the high side. We've got our solenoid sitting right in front of the batteries. Our motor right below. And then we've got our control. We've got our key switch. This is our 12 volt circuit. This would be the battery two together would make 24 volts this is our third battery in the series all three of them together make 36 volts and I got the squiggly lines or the doubled up to show we got two cables going from the controller to each battery bank we've got our crossovers hooking the batteries together we got our internal switch in line with the key kill switch that are hooked up to the ground side of the controller. The ground, which also completes the circuit, goes around to the motor. We got the hot of the solenoid. It's 36 volt solenoid, so we got a 36 volt straight to the third in the series of batteries to provide 36 volts. power coming out of our controller to our solenoid and as long as our key switch and our internal switch turn the solenoid on the power will come out of the solenoid to our motor. Um, I've got the solenoid wired up correctly to where it's getting 36 volts of power and clicking on like normal and the only thing I haven't done is I didn't switch around the battery cables yet to show you what it does wired up backwards. Well I believe we've got everything hooked up right. Just to show you. We run off this first battery here and we're running at 13. Then we jump up to the second battery here at 26. And this third battery here jumps all the way up to 39. So we got some good Charged up batteries here. So now when we run our controller right here off of our main terminal that comes from the output of the controller to the solenoid and then this will go from the solenoid to the motor. So whatever power comes out of our controller it'll tell us right here at this terminal. First of all we gotta turn on our kill switch here. kick our controller on. Hear that nice loud click? Right there. Should be 12 volts. We're right at the 39 volts. Like I said, it's still hooked up backwards and that's what would happen. 
So in order to kick on, you jump right straight to 39 volts. And as you accelerate it further, 39, jump to the skip one, then you would go to your 24 volt spot and skip one, then you'd be up at the 12 volts where you should be at full throttle. So it's completely backwards. red cables that have to be hooked over here these two cables that have to be hooked here and then everything should operate correctly and I'm going to hook up the little motor to the way it is hooked up now just to show you what it would look like to kick in full speed <laughs> I've got a little motor just temporarily hooked up here just for this quick test of the controller being hooked up backwards Click our kill switch on. I have to hold this motor down. Motor test backwards. We kick it on first of all. Holy crap. Yeah, that jumps right to 36 volts right off. Expecting that, and then as you would accelerate, you would go to 24 volts and then full throttle, you'd be at this little 12 volts. So, we're gonna switch it around and hook it up right. Like 